Hello everyone, Nat Labs here. Today we're going to be trying to understand signal because I feel like when I learned signals, I, I misunderstood the concept really badly and I never used them to their full potential. And hopefully this tutorial will help alleviate that issue at least for the people who are watching this. And um, yeah, let's get right into it. So we're going to be making the simple scene where enemies will randomly spawn. And if we move our mouse over the player, um, all the enemies at that given time will disappear. So let's get right into making this. So you can see that my scene tree is actually very simple. All I have is a game scene. I have a main player, which is just an area. Uh, it's just an area 2D. And I have a timer, which we will connect using signals. And I have an enemy folder, which is the place where we will put all of our enemies, which are, again is just an area 2D. It doesn't have to be an area 2D. These can be whatever you want. Just make sure that um, your player or whatever is detecting the signal actually has um, a mouse entered signal that it can use. Otherwise, it's kind of hard to work with. For example, this Node 2D doesn't have that signal. Moving on, uh, we can start by actually developing pieces of what we saw at the beginning of the video of the example. And one piece that we could develop is the mouse, uh, the mouse entered function. But I don't want to, I don't want to do this and click connect. That's that's boring. I don't want to learn it like that. I want to do it through coding it. So what could we do? Well, I know for a fact that in my ready function, I have to, I could connect a signal and there's literally just a function called connect in Godot and you can type in mouse enter and I'm going to be connecting the signal to myself and I'm going to be connecting it to the method called, I'm going to be connecting to this uh, gibberish looking function and you have to make sure, and this really tripped me up when I was learning signals, that whatever's in here, you have to literally copy paste it, put parentheses around it and then make your function. Uh, whatever your function returns or what not and then you can literally just type in uh, so mouse enter and this will work and you can see that now when I run the scene I will get my player and it will just say mouse entered and you can see that I don't have the signal connected over here but I'm getting mouse enter to work now what do I want to do with mouse enter well let's say I want to emit another signal because I want to connect it up here I want to connect my mouse entered signal but I, I don't want to do it through the mouse entered I want to make it I want to make a I want to make another signal which has semantic meaning and uh, semantic also took me some time to understand it basically means the the meaning of the word so for example I want to make a signal that will tell my game scene that I move the mouse over the player and this is actually just a contrived example to learn about custom signals so you can make your own custom signal by using the keyword which are all highlighted in red by the way every keyword in Godot is highlighted in red or most keywords are highlighted in red and I'm going to type in signal I'm going to say um I don't know, uh, player wants to remove all enemies. That, that's going to be my signal name. And in my signal, uh, in this function, which is directly related to this, which is emitted whenever I um, move the mouse over the player, I'm going to emit a signal. And you can see that if I scroll down, uh, Godot actually knows that this is a signal that is po possible for this node to emit. And I can just do that. And it will emit a signal. Now, if you also go to the main player, you can see over here, we have our custom signal and it's right there and it's ready to be, it's ready to work. So I'm going to go to my game scene and I want to make sure that this works. So if I'm going to use the knowledge I have over here where we can connect signals, I'm just going to make sure this makes a bit more sense. And we're, I'm just going to name it something sensible. And now I'm going to go to my game scene. And if we saw, like, if we look over here in the uh, main player script, it would make sense that we would do something like this. We would go to a ready function, we would type in connect, and then we would type in uh, whatever the, the signal is. So we just grab it. We would connect this signal to ourself. And right now I'm on the game scene script, which is actually attached to the game scene itself, as you can see. And we're going to uh, call the function, I don't know, test, right? And logically, this should work based on what we saw. However, when we actually run it, and now when we run it, there's no error and the issue is there's an error in the debugger and it says uh, object of no 2d attempts to connect an, a missing signal but you might be wondering we just defined signal and this signal is emitted because if we go to our output it says mouse entered and uh, if, if mouse entered ran in fact i'll just move it like this you can see that if mouse entered is running or if it's being printed then it's most likely the fact that this was emitted and it was emitted however the issue is in our implementation, which it means just a fancy way of saying the way we typed it. Uh, the issue is the way that we typed in connect. We have to say, get the main player and then connect the signal from the main player, which is player wants to remove all enemies to myself 
and then I'm going to emit the function or I'm going to run the function test when that happens. Now when we run the scene, you can see that we get both the game scene gets player signal and we also get the mouse entered print statement which is on the player. Using this, we can actually just say uh, in our, um, you know, like uh, we can say player wants to remove all enemies. We can just do that. And we can just say for child in uh, enemy folder dot get children. You could just say queue free, which is a equivalent to uh, child dot queue free. And now we basically have the working, uh, we basically have the working model for our game. The only issue is we have to make sure that these uh, enemies spawn. And you can see we have our enemy folder over here, or we have our enemy uh, area. And I'm just going to make a very quick function called die, which will just uh, uh, queue free the enemy, right? Because we want to get rid of it. And now in my timer, I want to say every second or every 0 0.1 seconds or whatever the wait time is, I want I want to basically do this. But I don't I don't want to uh, do it with the uh, clicking. I want to program it. So yeah, that, that's gone. You can see that this icon will disappear because we disconnected the signal. And now, what can we say? Well, we can go to our ready function because that's where all the connections happen. They happen at the moment the scene is ready to go. And we're just gonna say, get our timer, and we're gonna connect the timeout signal to ourself, and we're gonna call out the timeout method, or we're gonna ca call the spawn enemy method. And the advantage of making your signals with connections, like actually typing them out and making them yourself, is that you actually have a lot of control over what the signals is called, what the signal is called, or how it works? Because now I know that a function spawn enemy method. If I just hold control and hover over it, I can already see that it's up here, and I already know it's connected to the timer. So I can basically do a really simple uh, uh, block of code which spawns in enemies, and you can just see I'm just getting an instantiation to the enemy object. I'm I'm setting its global position. Actually, I should do it like this. So I'm just gonna add it to the uh, enemy folder uh, node. And I'm just going to set its position to a random uh, range. And now when you're in the scene, we we'll get exactly what we want. But you can see that we're actually queue freeing everything. And if you really want to, this is just a really side, uh, just a side tip. If you want to call your own function on a on an object, well, you can just call it. Like there's no issue. I mean, Godot might run into a uh, problem if uh, the object doesn't have the method die. And you can actually see what would happen if I call this like something with two e's. Uh, when I go like this, it says I can't find this method. Uh, just to overcome this issue, you can do if child dot has method. And if you're wondering where I'm figuring this out, it's all in the Godot documentation. And if, it's not even that it's in the Godot documentation. If you just do something like, I don't know, main player, like if you just get access to your main player really quickly, let me just type in a uh, hi. Uh, if you just, uh, like for example, if you just want to learn about things that are in Godot, you can r easily like just type in main player dot get and you can just scroll through this list and Godot will show you everything that you can do with this player. So I, I learned about has method from literally just typing in has and wow, okay, I can I can have a lot of things. And if I don't know about something, I'll double click it and uh, right, uh, control click that and then see if um, anything is uh, anything in the documentation is there. So that's just a really quick tutorial or um, video on how to understand signals in Godot. Um, if you have any questions or if there's anything that didn't make sense, please feel free to leave a comment. And with that, I thank you very much for watching. And I have an enemy folder, which we will, which it,